hello, hello, and welcome to the Hoof GP. My name's Graham Parker, and today we are looking at some dairy cows, then we're gonna pack up and head out to a big beef farm where we are trimming some monstrous bulls. Stick with me, guys, smash the subscribe button, and only if you like it, give this video a big thumbs up. Nah, just, just do that anyway. First job of the day is to get the cows in and get the crush set up. <laughs> like a glove. That was good, wasn't it? That was perfect. You got that out easier than I thought you would. I always do. He's good. <laughs> you see, we left the crush up hydraulically and then pull the Jeep out from underneath it. And in this case, we reverse the pickup back up the side of the crush because we use it as a table. Okay, something bad just happened. I just hit the pickup. Oh! I just fixed this. Moving on. Where it's possible, we always try and get these gates on the inside of the race because that way, cows can't push them open at all. Obviously, we'll still tie them open, but this way, the cows cannot move it at all and it's much, much easier because we're not around and try to keep the cows in. Here's a top tip. You gotta make sure there's no like snags in the cable like that, otherwise the electricity gets stuck and can't get through the kink. Yeah, that's no use. That's better. So as soon as we've got the crush set up, the first job at this farm is to get some sawdust, spread it around the crush so that these cows can't slip. Then get this cow in, cause she's number one in the hit list. And as it goes, she really has a sore back left foot. So I take the bulk of the material out with the grinder, prepare this inner claw for Craig to put on that block, and then while Craig puts that block on, I go and trim the front feet to give that a time to cure, and I might as well be doing something. back to the problem foot. You see this cow problem is a problem in the white line. This is the white line. It's actually that kind of grey substance around here that joins the sole horn to the outer wall horn. So this is the white line here. It goes all the way around from the top here, right the way around down here and then back up here and disappears up in here. And what happens is because it's a join it's a weak part in the cow's anatomy. And the laminae in there, the bit that sticks this to the inside of the foot, can actually get hurt, bashed, bruised or inflamed and then it bulges out the side like this. So we need to get rid of the top of this part of the lesion to enable this part to grow all the way down here seamlessly. Obviously if there's a hole at the top, that hole will always form a crack all the way down here. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that.
So I'm really, really trying not to cut into any live flesh and I'm literally putting my knife in behind the loose horn and pulling it away. There's actually some pus in here. This is worse than I thought it was to begin with and that's why it's really important they take away all of the loose horn. You can see it's not really bleeding much. I've just necked her slightly or grazed her slightly as I'm pulling away that loose horn because obviously I can't see behind it. The goal is never to neck it or never to draw blood but in some cases it's totally inevitable there's going to be a little bit because you are going to be touching raw or open corium. While we don't want to cut into it, it is still likely, it's easy for me to say, it is still likely there will be a small amount of blood. But as you can see, I've not touched it and that's been 10 or 20 seconds there's still no more blood. So it's not actually actively bleeding, it's just kind of weeping. And now that we've got all of this loose horn away from here, Craig is going to go ahead and wrap it with Embryonics Magical Paste to dry all of this up and make sure that it really does heal as well as we can hope. I mean, how it sticks. This bandage that Craig's putting on will stay on for four to five days and then after that, that lesion should be much, much drier and after that a new layer of skin should have started to form and it should be sealed from the elements and well on its way to recovery. Hopefully we'll try and check on this cow again in two weeks to see how she's faring but problems like this because they have to grow all the way down that side wall can take months and months to heal properly. And during all that time doing everything else, the glue is dry perfectly so we can drop our food straight away. See this cow's also got an ulcer on this side. So straight away I'm gonna ask Craig for a block. Yes! And we'll get that cleaned up ready for a block and more or less right out to take the weight completely off of that ulcer. The reason I know I'm gonna need to apply a block is this inside claw is already too low, so we won't be able to take enough height off the outer claw to get all of the weight on the inner claw. You see, we don't always need a block. It's just if you can't get enough height on that good claw to relieve the bad claw of pressure, then you need to use a block to artificially do it. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this trimmed up, trim out this ulcer, and Craig's gonna stick a block on. So if you think of an ulcer kind of like a blister, this claw is clearly bigger than that claw there. So this one is taking too much weight and eventually all of that banging every time she steps is pushing the inside of her foot basically out through the bottom of this foot and that is causing in here what we call an ulcer. But it's kind of like a blister. The red protruding flesh that you can usually see is actually called the corium. That's the bit that grows the horn and that's the last layer underneath the horn so it's the first bit we would see if you remove the horn and that's exactly what that part there is that kind of reddish part of what looks black on the screen right now so we're going to pair away the height on this heel to get more pressure off this side and we're going to dish this right out again trying not to draw any blood You can actually see the ulcer, that fleshy part there, sticking out. And you can see that I'm trying not to cut through it at all, but this part is actually dead tissue now, so we will snip it off. You see that little extra layer? of horn here needs to come away.
This is just removing height from this heel just to make sure that we get as much weight away from the sore point as possible. Right, let's get this show on the road. We've taken too much time on the first car. Well, we haven't because it takes a long it takes, but it's taking a lot longer than normal. So we're gonna crack on, get the rest of these girlies done. That is the first batch of cows done. Now to go and get some more. Normality has resumed. It's chucking it down. Ladies, come on. Ooh. People ask if the cows remember me. They do. And it's not in a good way. Come on, girls. Come on. Because they're herding animals, they hate being separated from the rest of the herd. And when we put them up the race and into the crush, that's exactly what we're doing. So they really don't like a visit to the Hoof GP. Come on. Come on. Move. Come on. Craig goes in that way and heads them off at the pass. So it's like half 10 now and we've done 20 or so cows. I'm not exactly sure how many. We've got 10 left to go. We're getting on much, much better now. And actually it's starting to dry up outside. And we're outside this afternoon, so that's a plus. <sighs> Time for a coffee. Oh. This is the kind of recheck we deal with all the time. This cow has had a sole ulcer in here, which is a wooden block on because I've presumed that it will heal really easily and in a short amount of time. So let's go ahead and see if in fact I was right or wrong. There is some loose horn, so that definitely needs removed. This cow was trimmed two weeks ago and there's still a slight openness or rawness to that ulcer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave this block on because there's still about 10 mil of height in the back, and a couple of mil in the front. And this is obviously more towards the back. Give it a good spray with iodine and we'll check her again in two weeks time. Now that I've come over to do her right foot, it's actually pretty much the same story. She's still got an existing block on here with a bit of height and probably a lesion in here or maybe this that was causing the problem before i haven't checked the computer but we're going to go ahead re remove any of the loose horn and see if this one is healed up As you can see, this one has completely healed. Actually, it was a sole ulcer right in the middle there where that little black spot was. But as you can see, she's all good to go. I am gonna leave that little fragment of wooden block on though because this claw seems to be slightly bigger than this one and that will continue to give that a little bit more healing time to thicken up the sole. Just five more cows left to go, then back up, wash up and to the next farm. When it comes to washing up, it's a real team effort because we need to get to the other farm as quickly as we possibly can. Now 
now that Craig's finally finished playing on his phone and I've finished washing the crush, it's time to crack on to the next farm, which is just 10 minutes down the road. Our second farm today is home to these gorgeous black Aberdeen Angus cattle which you can see grazing in the fields as they do pretty much all year round, meaning that their feet don't really get all that many problems. Farm number two, we're outside and the heavens have closed. So we are on the money today, happy days. Like I say, there's a wheen or quite a few bills to do here and a few cows, but you never really know what you're gonna get until we finish, to be honest. So let's get set up and get trimming some bills. Despite not really having any real issues with lameness on this farm, the farmer still gets us in two or three times a year just to go through any cows that have overgrowth, twists in their feet or are showing early signs of lameness. Just like any other day in the weird and wonderful world of cattle hoof trimming, I had a great day today. Thank you very, very much for coming along for the ride. And if you haven't already done it, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Catch you next time, guys. My heart is open. It just took some time. Now I just hope that you stay for a little while. You fix what's broken. So just stay for a little while So just stay for a little while I didn't think that I would find that someone Who's as honest as you are Make it all right. I want to know you better. Oh. Give me every detail. Oh. I won't judge you as you know. I could stay forever.